Okay, so twine, what is it good for? Um, surprisingly quite a few things, actually. Um, so, I'll just get started. Oh my god, the ones I can't just... Okay. So, um, a little disclaimer first, this presentation may contain bugs. Um, I've actually built the presentation in twine, and I've not really had the chance to go through it properly, so there may be bugs in it, like with all good games. Um, and it may also contain interactivity. That will be dependent on the first disclaimer. If there are bugs, the interactivity may not work. <laughs> um, but hopefully it will, so we'll, we'll see what happens. So, um, a little bit about myself. Um, my name is Alex, and I'm an online community manager. Um, I used to be the manager at One for Mobile, managing the Celtic Heroes community. And um, I'm also a former games writer. I used to write for sites such as uh, Gods of Geek and the uh, Gamers Guide to Life, which unfortunately is no longer around anymore, but that was nothing to do with me. Um, <laughs> one thing I am not is I'm not a game designer. I'm not an artist. I can draw stick men. That's about it. And I'm not a programmer. Um, something I just want to kind of make clear, I'm not any of those things. So, of course, being not being a programmer, not being an artist, not being a designer, I decided to take part in this year's Global Game Jam. Um, why? I just felt like a challenge. Why not? Um, and I decided to do the Game Jam by myself. Partly because I didn't want to join a team for, then, for the team to then realize that actually he can't do anything. Um, which I thought would be kind of unfair on a team if they were working towards a project and they needed me to do something really important and then realize that actually nobody can't do anything. Um, so I decided to go, go it alone and make a game using Twine. So yeah, why did I make a game in Twine? Why did I do the game jam? Well, partly it was to challenge myself. I've never made a game before. I've never tried to be making a game before. I wanted to see if I could make a game within a time period of 48 hours. And I wanted to have something that I could show my parents and tell them, look, I've made something. I've done this. My dad still of the opinion that gaming, you know, he didn't quite understand it. He still refers to the time I was constantly chasing that man in Warcraft because he thought the camera was behind and I was constantly chasing my character. <laughs> no matter how many times I tried to explain to him, no, that was me, he, he still couldn't quite get it. So if I could make a twine game, something that's you know is more text-based that they could play through themselves, maybe you know they'd be proud of me. Um, <laughs> and also the chance to, to meet new people. Obviously, Game Jam there's a lot of people there, and although you know I was on my own, there's still a chance to actually meet new people, find out a lot more people, and just generally have a good time. So twine, what is twine? Twine, according to its website, is an open source tool for telling interactive, non-linear stories. What that basically means is, is that it allows you to create an interactive story without ever writing a single line of code. There's um, a web-based interface, which is kind of in beta, but the program you can download, there's more download, open it up, and you can create a game within minutes. It builds to HTML, which means that you can then post your work almost anywhere. Um, this is just running, just kind of not even connected to the internet. It's just an HTML file, and that's all it is. All the stuff that you do in Twine, all the different little elements you add to it, all of the you have, you have at the end of it is a simple HTML file, which you can then upload to the server. How does Twine work? Each page, such as kind of this slide here, is defined as a passage in Twine. Um, passages can contain all some information, they can contain just text, you can use um, syntax and markup to alter the appearance of the text, and passages can be linked to one another, and links can appear in different ways. So for this Twine project, the links appear in blue, and they just go underlined when you mouse over them. If you have the mouse control, it's a lot easier. There we go. So that's an example of a linked passage. That passage was linked to the passage before, you click on it, and it takes you to this passage and then you can return back to any passage. So if you present multiple links in a Twine passage, you can offer players a choice of what to do. For example, the phone rings. Do you answer it, or do you leave it alone? 
Come on, the phone's ringing. Do you answer it? Do you leave it alone? What, what are we going to do? Answer it. Depends who it is. You don't know that. You don't have call ID. What's up, ET? I don't know. <laughs> well, you answer the phone and it's your mum. Oh, that's nice. Yeah, the lovely chat you mum. Although she's probably asking why she's constantly phoning you and you're not phoning her, but you know that's that's for you to decide really. So choice in Twine Games allows for narrative branching. You can present multiple branches of a story to players and they can then choose which path they go down. And you can really easily return to a passage by simply linking to it. So if you have a very complex branch of lots of different passages and you want to go back to near the beginning, all you have to do is name a passage and link back to it. In Twine, links between passages are, are visual. So when you're creating a program, you can see where your links are. For example, the visual map of this Twine game looks a little bit like that. So that's all the different passages. It has all the different types of um, types of passages as well. So there's image passages, there's CSS. Um, there's no JavaScript in this one, which I'll come to later. But that's kind of what a Twine map looks like. So it starts and then it just branches off and links back, and then you can you know, use this to kind of keep track of your story, you kind of see where elements do. And when you kind of click and drag and drop it, the elements will all move around together and the elements will stay there. So you can make things into whatever kind of pattern you want. If you want to make really nice pretty pictures, you can. So what can you do with Twine? Although basically what you can do with Twine is you can create stories, there's a lot more that you can extend it with. For example, you can use CSS, and CSS can alter the appearance of your game. And even with some very basic CSS, you can make a quite unique Twine game. This one, for example, the CSS has been altered so the text is a lot bigger, because I don't think everybody wants to be really close reading a really tiny writing. Um, you can do things such as remove all these kind of elements around here, you can have multiple windows, Somebody has even created um, an all-star Final Fantasy inventory in Twine using CSS. They have created, it looks amazing, and that's all it is, it's just some CSS and some JavaScript. So you can also add macros um, using JavaScript to Twine to add more functionality to Twine games. So it's not a simple case of users just clicking. You can have random text, you can display a minimap, you can have a timer, um, you can put password boxes in, you can, basically if you can write it in JavaScript and you can make it work with the Twine engine, then you can do it. So it really adds a lot more interactivity and makes Twine games a lot more than just kind of stories where you just click on links. You can also add variables to your Twine game, which allow you to track your player's progress through the game. So you can set a variable, alter it, clear it, and it's really effective when you combine a variable with conditional logic. So you offer players a choice of what they do depending on their actions which they've done before. So you can use the standard logical operators such as AND and OR. You can compare whether a player has a variable, and then you can then offer them unique content based on that variable. So depending on what their prior choice is, so for example, if you have a Twine game where a player enters a room and there's a bottle of water on the side, if they click on the bottle of water, you can set it so that they have that bottle of water in their inventory. Later on in the game, you can then check whether they have that bottle of water. If they do, you can offer them one passage. If they don't, you can offer them another passage. And you can also add images to Twine games, such as this picture of a doll dressed as Yoda. Um, the really nice thing about Twine is that when you add images, you can import them from a URL, or you can import them directly into Twine. And when you build a Twine file, these images are built directly into the file. So you don't need to have a separate folder with all your images in it. Um, you can just have them in the Twine file, and then they'll just build directly into the HTML, which is really useful because then all you have to do is post the HTML file and not worry about having all the images. Um, if you want to load them from the web, then you can do that, but then you need a uh, file hosted on a, on a server. You need uh, an internet connection. By putting them directly into Twine, you can just have um, dog gears that just sit in there, regardless of the internet connection. And I have a rather boring image, admittedly. I don't know why some of you address the dog as a yoga, but that's... Hmm. I don't know. So, I created a game called Man is the Measure of All Things for Twine, for a game dummy, and it ended up looking like this. Um, so it's 
a little bit different to the standard sort of twine. It has two panels, the black and the grey, and um, it was used um, some kind of custom CSS and some custom JavaScript to deliver an experience. It's a little bit different to your normal twine. So it was hidden things like there was no main menus, nothing like that. It just went straight to the experience. Um, again, there's images directly in the twine file and just kind of build directly from that. The game was based on Aristotle's theory of perception and the levels of consciousness. Um, for those of you who weren't at the game jam, the theme for this year's jam was we don't see things as they are, we see them as we want to see them, or some variation on that line. Um, for me, I then took that to me about perception, and because of a prior interest in philosophy and Asian philosophy, I went into Aristotle's theory of perception, which then about two o'clock in the morning led to levels of consciousness and some very weird things as well. Um, which didn't make it into the game, thankfully. Um, there was a lot of weird tangents that went off, but sleep deprivation and, and things like that, just, it's probably not the best idea to include them in a, in a, in a text game. Um, so that was the game, and the game essentially has you going through a, a tower, climbing the levels of a tower um, as, as, as a being, as somebody, with um, a guide attached to you. And the idea is that your guide is very, can only deal with emotions, whereas you really have physical reactions. And so it was that kind of split. So um, I was also saying perception is that perception is the interaction between an object and a perceiver. So there's something that's being perceived, and then the perceiver receives that kind of object's perception. Um, so I kind of built the point here around that kind of duality. And uh, you were making decisions based on the left hand side, which would then affect the right hand side of the screen, which would send two characters. So what was different about this from a regular twine game? Um, so we used some custom CSS to display two panels. Um, so the two panels in an all twine game, you just have the one, and you just have the one passage. What I found was um, a CSS somebody had done before, which allowed you to display two bits of information at the same time. And so you could update them at the same time as well. Or you could update, update them at different times. And that was used by a macro. Uh, and you basically just had to set the replace macro and you decide which side you wanted to replace. So if you click the link, you can set it to replace the left-hand side as blank, and the right-hand side as some content. Or you can have it the other way around, or you can have them both as blank, or both as content. Um, so it was basically trying to figure out what each kind of level of the story, what was, uh, what was being updated. Um, so having to keep track of things like that, so making sure that each click, the writing was updated, so there's lots of kind of going back to the game, playing from the beginning, making sure that each click updated it, what I want to update it, and then tearing my hair out when it turns out that no, that wasn't working, but why is it working before? It wasn't working now. So maybe there was something I'd done before, which was kind of usual game jam stuff about three o'clock in the morning. So, so what were the challenges um, in making a twine game? Well, first of all, there was getting to grip to twine. I hadn't used twine prior to the game jam. I downloaded it a couple of days before and ran it once to make sure it worked on my machine. Because at the time, my machine was very old and struggled to run most things. So um, although Twine is, you know, it's, it's a very quite easy or simple piece of software, I was still dubious as to whether or not it would run on my machine. Um, thankfully it did. Um, so it was getting to grip with Twine and getting to grip with its syntax and how it dealt with, um, with you know, altering the text. It's not kind of straight HTML, uh, although it's kind of very basic, like in the language, there are some slight differences. Understanding how passages work, understanding how to build and how to post all that. Um, also understanding the two passage layout. The two passage layout did things very differently because it meant that passages weren't linked visually. So when you were updating the panels, you basically had your passages in all separate passages, but they weren't linked by arrows. So I had to figure out a way to keep a track of what was going on in my game without relying on the arrows. So that's kind of the zoom in post of, of what the game was looking like. So I had to kind of start with the initial display panel and it was displaying the two different sides. And then there was all the kind of different levels. So we were going through six levels of the game and that was kind of split down there. And all these panels were then related to different parts of content. But the thing is, there was no way to know whether this panel was linked to that panel, whether that one was linked to that one, or that one to that one. Because they were linked in twine. All I was doing was basically updating the content in the left hand side and the right hand side by using a macro. So I had to make sure that the way I structured my twine file was such that, in a way, I could easily tell, well, this is this level and these go to ones here. You know, and also the naming structure was, was there important to make sure that that was the first choice and these are all the ones related to that first choice. 
and when it was finished, it looked something a little like that. Um, so keeping track of, of all that was was a challenge because especially when you're quite sleep deprived and you start seeing things, then suddenly you know you see passages and they go missing somewhere. You create a new passage and it starts creating it up there when you want to get down there. So then you go up there and then you find it's moved down there. And you can't remember whether you moved it or whether someone else moved it or whether the program itself moved it. And it's it's all very confusing. Um, so that was definitely a challenge, trying to keep that structure and trying to keep it in a way that I could actually understand what on earth was going on. Thankfully, when it's built, it's a lot simpler. And also writing the story. Um, like in other games, there were, I had to make sure that the story was, was good. Um, I've never really written a game story before, so again, that was a challenge. Um, I found that less was, was definitely more. Um, Less because that meant that I had to write less, which was obviously kind of good given the time constraints, but also it meant that I could leave things to the player's imagination. If you very much describe a, a tower to the very minute details, then it has presents a definite picture. And if you just give hints, then the player fills it in. And it kind of gives them the impression that it's them themselves who are going on this journey rather than them inhabiting um, a different character. Um, so I definitely found that kind of reducing the amount I was writing, one, helped me finish the game in a decent time and then I could go back and polish it. But also actually lend it to it thematically and kind of improve the narrative in some sense. Um, because then it wasn't a one person story, it was very unique and the people that played it had a very unique experience rather than a, a standard experience. So what's next for, for me and Twine? Well, I'm currently working on more Twine games. Uh, my current project has a working title of Terminal um, and it's involving um, Basically what I've created is an old style kind of computer terminal with kind of scrolling text and kind of the neon green um, text that you saw kind of in the 80s. And the idea is that you'll go through different levels of this kind of computer, um, opening more files and kind of figuring around the passwords to the next level. Um, so that involved learning some more JavaScript and improving my CSS to be able to get this to work. Um, I have kind of two display windows in terminal. And for the life of me, I couldn't figure out how to get them A, on the same kind of line, but also centered. Every time I tried to make it, it just floated to the left, which was fine, it, it worked, but it wasn't ideal. So looking like through the, through the Twine forums, the old Google group, trying to find a solution to this problem, and I came across the person who did the original version of the style sheet in a different header. Um, so I kind of revamped it for this one, but they said, yeah, I, mean, I made this header, but I can't figure out how to make sense of the elements. Brilliant, okay. So, Luckily, I managed to figure out a way to do that by wrapping the elements in CSS and then kind of uh, move them across. Um, so it's just learning kind of more JavaScript, learning more CSS, and um, basically kind of make more more findings. So if you're interested in playing my game jam game, you can go to bit.ly forward slash minus the measure. Um, it's currently hosted on um, philo. LME, which is a free Twine hosting service. All you do is basically upload a Twine file and host it for you, which is great if you don't have any website to host it in. Um, you can also find me on Twitter, uh, at Amplex, and also on the website, which isn't finished yet, but soon will be, and I've been saying that the past six months, but it will be soon finished, um, where there'll be more Twine games and links to other things as well. So, any questions? <coughs>